this is going to be awesome. <laughs> you eat a lot. <laughs> I do eat a lot. You eat do, a it's, lot. I'll tell you why. Here's why. Yeah. It's the only vice I have left. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. Mm -hmm. I don't do any of that. So basically, it's just eating. That's all. I know. I, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. I don't do. Uh, I don't drink anywhere either, and I don't smoke pot anywhere. I'll do drugs, but not like, uh, like heroin or shit like that. Like I take psychedelics. Um, okay. But for like, do you do you it know, medicinally, or are you doing it to trip balls? Yeah, medicinally. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's so like microdosing and shit like that, right? Yeah, I microdose rarely. Uh, I'll do like a full blown trip, like maybe three times a year or something like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I do it for. Do you? Did you ever do psychedelics? No, I mean I was too afraid to because like I have a I have oh, a plethora of psych issues. So I was like, okay, this is I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna end up going on a murder spree. So I decided, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, that's probably not a good choice for me to do. That's good. That's good to know. Yeah, they say uh, like people with like schizophrenia shouldn't do it, or people yeah. who have like mental illness in the family shouldn't do it. So it's good to know. Uh, but yeah, when did you like get like get sober? Like, are you in like AA and all that? Like, uh, I did do a bunch of AA points in my life, various points. Uh, I took what I could get from the program. I listen. I will be the the last thing I'll do. Yeah. is uh well i'm 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 answering the second part of the question first yeah so uh if i were uh, the last time i drank was four years ago mm -hmm. um and then the last time i did drugs was about 11 wait what is it 2000 yeah about 11 years ago wow so, wow and that's weed that's uh cocaine was my favorite i loved it it was very fun yeah, yeah. um so yeah uh i did do a bunch of AA in my life it's I don't bemoan the program. I think it's great. It's really helpful for people who need it. It's yeah. a lot, though. I mean, if you and there's a, elements that I use from L.A. and other mm -hmm. points of my other parts of my life that really helped me in terms of like coping with a lot of other things. So mm -hmm. I can't I can't give a enough credit. It's just it's a lot. Yeah. And uh, if you need it, great. But I don't need it to that extent. So yeah. I took what I could get from it. And, yeah. I understand. Yeah, that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, it couldn't be happier without all that shit. Yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. I think it's like uh, people who are addicts, like they need, or I mean, I mean, technically, like I'm an addict. You're also an addict. Like we need uh, another thing to be obsessed with. Like we need another yes. thing to put our focus into. And I think the rituals of AA are supposed to like be a substitute for that. Like the ritual of like the drug use and like the alcoholism is like, we're replacing it with like the community and the things that you do for the community and with the community. And um, I think that's what helps with the people, yeah. like with people. But yeah, like I, when I quit drinking, um, I quit drinking two years ago and I didn't need AA. I just like stopped like one day I was like, yeah, I'm just over it um totally but that's like I a mean, yeah if difficult you can do it that way though. i mean why yeah, not yeah. do it that way exactly you know? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, there's some people who are to able quit? to do it yeah huh what led you to quit drinking i it just seemed like a big waste of water to me <laughs> <laughs> that, oh that's a perfectly reasonable reason to quit that's I mean, all you know, i that's, needed it's not in the top 10 for most people but it's good i mean it's good enough it's all I really needed. Like no hangover has ever made me want to, you know, like I would still be like, ah, oh, my, and then I would get over it. You know, you forget it. It's, it's like similar to like childbirth. I heard like when women give birth, it's like the most agonizing and horrible experience, but then they forget that pain. And it's like, yeah. that's nature's way of making them like able to procreate again. Cause if they fully have that memory, then they'll never do it again. But it's like, it's like the same with my hangovers. I would be like, this is a horrible, but then I would get over it. And then I'm like, I'm going to drink it because drinking was fun. It was so yeah. fucking fun. But See, that's good. So you ended your drinking career on a high note. See, I dr like when I ended mine, it was me drinking at my house alone. You yeah, know? no, I, I enjoyed that still. <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay. Good. I mean, by the way, I'll, I'll be uh, to be a hundred percent candid. Yeah. Totally love drinking on my own more than going out and drinking <laughs> yeah, any too. day of the week. Any day of the week. So much me better. Too. Yeah. Yeah. It's cheaper. Yeah. You know, like yes. 
I don't have to deal with people I don't want to fucking deal with. Yeah. You don't have to deal with people. Uh, for me, I would drink to the point of passing out, and now it's not on a bench or in a bus, so that's yeah. great. It's safer. You know, I already yeah. have my bed there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Totally get it. Physically, totally get physically, it. it's safer. Uh, but you know, it's like not safe because we now have phones and social media, and you know, like <laughs> sometimes, like I remember one time I was like super drunk, and I was like looking at like some. So it was like some celebrity and he like posted it was christmas day and he posted a photo of like a dead baby or something like because the baby like starved to death and i was like this is like such an like inappropriate photo to post on christmas like what a buzzkill like i posted something like that i mean listen the tuesday <laughs> after christmas that's when you could post a dead baby yeah, picture, so you know, yeah wait christmas. a few days or wait 24 you hours animal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Like, why are you ruining Christmas for but I was just smashed and like people were so mad at me for my comment. They were like, Why are you are you okay? Did something happen? I saw you. Oh no, no, no. I just uh, oh, okay, I okay. was just fixing adjusting a little bit. Oh, okay, here. okay. But yeah, um, okay, but what about you? What was like like oh okay, I'm not I'm not this is my last drink four years ago. What was that? So, okay. Um, if you want to talk about things. it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I, I like talking about this stuff. Uh, it's a, uh, <laughs> I love when people ask me <laughs> yeah. about dark points in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, let's see. So it was a bunch of things um, that just all led to one thing. It started getting to the real thing. There was two things that happened at the same time. So the last few times I drank, I would binge drink for two weeks and then wow. I'd stop for a few months. And that was Whoa. like the last five or six times that I like went on it. Like, like I would binge drink. I would just stay home. I would uh, drink, pass out, drink, pass mm-hmm. out, drink, pass mm-hmm. out. Do this for like two weeks. And then I'd quit for a few months. And yeah. for a while, like I was okay with that. And what I really started really liking, and this is the weirdest part, was I never enjoyed the drinking part. I'd uh-huh. get nauseous the second I'd smell like the first bit of alcohol. So that's how yeah. I was knew it was like, okay, this is coming to an end. I get uh-huh. it. I know uh-huh. when it's going to happen. Right. Right. Uh, but I've really enjoyed like the two week period after the binge where I would get my life back together for oh, some reason. Like, cause I wouldn't shower or anything like forget activities of daily living. They'd go right. to shit. So yeah. I was like that first shower felt great. And then yeah. doing laundry felt great. And like, Ooh. it was just like, it felt like I was rebuilding. I was just like, yeah, look at me getting my shit together. Yeah. And then once that stopped feeling good, I was just like, mm-hmm. why am I doing this? Just That's why? So interesting. Wow. There was that. And then the other thing that happened. So I, I quit drinking, uh, uh, shortly after my birthday. Matter of fact, uh, we both, you know, Pratik, uh, as well. Yeah. He was, he's one of the few people in Chicago that's ever seen me drink. We went out drinking for my birthday, mm-hmm. um, uh, four years ago. And, mm-hmm. uh, I decided to quit a couple days after that. And then a few days after that, a mutual friend of ours committed suicide and Pratik sent me the text and I was just like, this, Oh, I guess I'm not quitting drinking after all this week. <gasps> So yeah. I started drinking for another week after that. And then after yeah. that, I just quit for, you know, for four years. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Sorry and me and the friend. person who had committed suicide, we had a lot of like bad times together when we would both get drunk and we would both get fucked up. So it's like, okay, yeah. between that and like yeah. me just genuinely not enjoying drinking, why the fuck am I? Right. Can I curse on this? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Good. I was gonna yeah. say because we're comics, you know, we curse. Yeah. We, yeah. We and this is a podcast. Words. It's it's not on the radio. There's no. It's not on the radio. There's no. Grace, man you tell me why I've been on the radio this whole time. <laughs> Sorry, this is a podcast. <laughs> no. By the way, your studio situation looks official as fuck. Isn't it great? Yeah. 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 Thank you. It's nice. It's my closet. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I was waiting for. I was. Where's the hook? Where is she doing this right now? It's my like, fucking no. closet. Yeah. Um. Yeah. When I was setting this up, um, in 2020, like late 2020, when I was setting it up, I was like so stressed out. Oh, but um, yeah, worked out. Looks nice. Looks profesh. You know. Keeps I the respect the professing. fact that you have a closet big enough that you can sit in i mean that's Mm -hmm. that's really cool 
I yeah. mean, that's, that's kudos to you, LA, you, you know, that's, that's, that's money right there. You know, any this bit is, of that's somebody's apartment that you're sitting in right now. This for is a lot somebody's people, fucking so. crib. Yeah. 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 No, I have to uh, move a lot of shit out of here every time I come in and do this. <laughs> so, like, so it's, <laughs> so it's it an is active a, closet. It's an active it's closet. closet. I am. I, I keep my clothes in here. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Right. Sometimes if I'm too lazy, I have like hoodies and stuff behind me and it's like pushing yes. my head forward. Sometimes it's like that. But today I was like, no, I'm going to take all the shit out. Yeah. Yeah. I also I threw out that. a bunch of stuff yesterday. I was like, I, I had this huge sack of like clothes. Do you guys have like Buffalo Exchange or shit like that in Chicago where you like sell used clothes and try to get money for it? Uh, I'm sure we do. Um, I, I mean, there. Oh yeah, we we have a place called Just the Exchange. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. you can sell clothes. So. Same idea. Yeah. yeah. So like, uh, I had this huge sack full of old clothes, and I brought it there, and they were like, "We're not going to take any of this because uh, you have terrible style and taste, and fuck you." So um, I just put it in like one of those big donation bins yesterday, like a bunch oh, of it. Nice. Was very like. Oh, yeah very Marie Kondo kind of day. Yeah. I was like, absolutely. Well, I mean, look, you're, you're, you're at least, you're not throwing it all out. You know, you're putting it towards a good cause, you know? Yeah. And yeah, but that's fucked up though. They didn't buy your clothes. Like why didn't they buy your clothes? They just, yeah. is it, it is a fashion thing, isn't it's it? It's a fashion thing. They're like, this is no, Stop. <laughs> they're like, you have terrible taste and ew, <laughs> fuck you. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, I'm sorry. Oh, my God, a comedian with bad fashion taste. Oh, yeah. what a – but you're, you're innovating here. I actually think I have great fashion taste, actually. I buy really? a lot of clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't really buy, like, cheap stuff, honestly. I buy, like, kind of expensive shit. And that's why I was, like, more surprised because, like, some of the stuff that I brought in, they were, like, designer shit. And, you know, one of the people, they didn't even know, like, a certain, like, uh, label they were like we don't know what this is and I was like okay well you 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 are the one that is uncultured in this scenario okay so fuck off but in any case it's just yeah like one can have so many clothes you know it's like women sure. we buy a lot of clothes like it's a stereotype but it's a true one we buy a lot of fucking clothes and then sometimes they just kind of sit there and we don't wear them and I was yeah. like this shit's gotta go I have I have a closet that I use as a studio and they gotta go. That's right. You know, priorities. It's what you sacrifice as an artist. I get it. I completely get it. Yeah. I work so, part time okay. at a grocery store. So do you really? Oh yeah. I live very minimally. Like it's not. Yeah. I I'm I'm a basic bitch. There's uh, there's no bells and whistles. Like food yeah. is honestly my biggest expenditure. Yeah, you're actually living a very zen life. That's actually yeah. um a very like that's like a goal I have, but I can't because I'm so fucking materialistic and I'm the basic bitch, you know, like I'm the basic bitch in the sense that like I, I still uh, need the bells and whistles and the trinkets and the bullshit. Like I need to make shit look pretty and nice and blah, blah, blah. Well, what yeah. would you say is the most extraneous of the bells and whistles? I guess clothes. Like, what do you have to go over the top with every single time? <sighs> Yeah, I guess I guess clothes and like shoes and bags and stuff like nice. Um, nice. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's, you know. and lately I don't even buy like that fashionable shit. Like I wear a lot of like sporty stuff like, okay. like sweats and like, you know, shit like that. But they're still like Adidas and like Nike, like that shit still adds up. It's it's not cheap. Yeah. Yeah, it really isn't cheap. No, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if it costs more than twelve dollars for any article of my clothing, I don't buy it. <laughs> See, that's smart. You're very, that's very smart. smart. But like, I'm on Instagram a lot, and Instagram has hacked my emotions and my brain, and they know exactly how to target me of with course. shit that they know I'm gonna be looking at. And oh my god, Instagram's the worst. I thought Instagram was bad. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what your experience is, but. Uh, once I started with TikTok, I was like, this, this is the antichrist of apps. It is the worst. Like they figure you out so fast yeah. and then they just, it's a deluge of just it shit. And it's, it's, it, I could see how people get sucked in and reprogrammed by this. I could totally see it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. uh, 
I have a friend. He's like older though. He's he's a real boomer, and he was yeah. like, I don't know why, but there's all this like anti-Trump stuff on my TikTok, and I hate it. I was like, that's because you, <laughs> that's because you sit and watch the whole video. I was like, yeah. the next time you see an anti-Trump video, just swipe left or swipe up. Like, don't don't look at them. And he's like, oh, that's all I have to do. I was like, yeah, you don't have to sit and watch the whole thing. Like, if you swipe up and you dwell on the videos that you want to dwell on like a cat video or whatever then yeah. that's gonna be the new algorithm like the new algorithm yeah. i got sucked in so like i i got uh i got caught up in uh like the relationship advice ones oh. just because and i was looking at it because i was like these are because the ones that they pitch to guys are so ridiculous i'm like this is the funniest thing i've ever seen in my life <laughs> But now it's yeah. like all I get. And then about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, they started putting Jordan Peterson in my feed. And oh, I'm like, wow. oh, what's happening? Okay. I see how this works now. Got yeah. It. Yeah. Right. You know, what's yeah. interesting is uh, the things that we like, this is actually very philosophical, but like the things that we are repelled by are things that we're attracted to as well. Cause we think about them just as much. So you think about uh, oh, some, absolutely. something or someone you hate just as much as the things that you love. Perhaps the things that you hate, you think about even more than the things that you love. And Very true. because you hate it so much, it's in your purview and you swipe and you look and you're like getting to know your enemy more. That ends yeah. up becoming a part of your <laughs> algorithm and your, and your being, your essence, essentially. Um, it's a hundred percent true. There was a, uh, one of my favorite movies of all time is uh, Howard Stern, Private Pope. Oh, it's like a success, just right? And there was, there was like a... Oh, shit. You keep freezing up. Um... And oh, fuck. The, the second one was the average... Howard Stern hater listens for two and a half hours, and I'm like, yeah, that makes all Wait. the sense in the world. It, it like it like froze and then cut off, and now I can't hear you anymore. Can you hear me? Um, I can hear you now, but now your video is frozen. Um, maybe. Uh, great. Do you have no, uh, Do you have Zoom? Great. I do have Zoom. This is, by the way, better. This is better than Zoom. Uh, the the sound quality and video quality is higher on this, which is why I use it. But uh, since it's not working, it honestly, it might even just be this platform. Sometimes this platform is shit. So let me send you a Zoom link. I'm sorry about this. And um, let's try and continue from there. Is that OK? Let's test. What about now? Now it's better. Now okay. it's better. Am I moving? Okay. Let's let's try continuing. And then if it cuts off again, I sent you a Zoom link via email. If it cuts off again, then we'll transfer to Zoom. Is that okay? Sounds good. All right. So, sorry about that. You were talking about how you were talking about you were talking about Howard Stern. I'm sorry. The whole story about Howard Stern is now gone. Can you redo that story? I'm okay. so sorry. Oh, so the Howard Stern movie Private Parts. So it, there's a scene where Paul Giamatti's character is his producer when he's at NBC, and uh -huh. uh, he says the average Howard Stern uh, uh, fan listens for an hour and ten minutes or something like that. Right? Forgot the uh -huh. actual amount of time. And the guy's like this, that's not too bad. And he's like, the average Howard Stern hater listens for two hours and 20 minutes. And they're mm -hmm. like, if they hate him, why are they listening? And he says, number one answer, they want to hear what he's going to say next. Mm -hmm. Makes all the sense in the world to me. Yeah. I totally get it. Yeah. yeah. So that you can yeah. rebut it so that you can go and like complain about it later. Yeah. It's, yeah. um, it was similar like during like the whole like presidential like stuff you know like the other side would know more about the policies and the like the plans that the other the opposing candidate has and then it's yeah. like we're like oh shit that's what they're gonna do that's great i didn't even <laughs> i didn't even know like until they brought it up you know 
but I think that's how it always works. And it's like interesting how algorithms are showing us exactly like what we're dwelling on. Right. Like in terms yeah. of, cause in a way it's like, you're wasting your energy by giving it attention, giving your attention to something that you despise, you know, and yeah. Oh, it makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. More power. Totally. Right. I the best thing that I heard about, uh, and I, I think it was on that Netflix documentary about Facebook, but it's like, uh, it was something along the lines of, because all of these products are quote unquote free, even what we're using right now is free to us, we're not paying for it. It's just like, if, you, if, if you're getting a service and you're not paying for it, then you're the product. Right. Which is right. great. It's like, this is how they sell us at, this is mm -hmm. how they sell ad space because, you know, they have our attentions and mm -hmm. it's good. We're all mm -hmm. part of the machine. Yay. Yeah, we are. What's it like we being are. a lemming? Do you like it? A lemming? A lemming. Oh, uh, you, have you ever played the computer? Oh my God, I just dated myself. Have what you ever the played fuck? the computer game Lemmings? No, what is that? <laughs> oh, so it's like this silly computer game. And basically you have to sign these lemmings tasks because no matter what you tell them to do, whether it's fall off a cliff or, or run into spikes, they're going to do it. So that's oh. what we are as people. It's, I should have just said sheep. That would have been <laughs> that, that for sheep. I mean, but yeah, it's same, same concept. We could be shepherded however they want. Fun. Fucking A. Political conversations with grapes. Yeah. yeah. Is it young or young? My last name? Yeah. It's Jung. Jung, okay. Mm -hmm. Cuz I've heard yeah. that I've heard that last name pronounced two different ways. Mhm. Mm yeah, there yeah. there's uh Jung like CG Jung like the psychoanalyst. Um he's Swiss German. And then Swiss it's German. Yeah, and then Jung which is a Korean last name. Sometimes they'll spell it C H U N G and pronounce it Chung, but it's yeah. pronounced Jung, J U N G. Yeah. Speaking also, of Korean. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. No, I was gonna say well, I was like just Carl. Gonna say, like, I was in LA <laughs> visiting your your town and like, man, yeah. your Korean barbecue situation out there fucking unbelievable. My <laughs> God. My yeah. God. I spent yeah. thirty five dollars. I oh, ate like three gosh. cows and two pigs Jesus. worth of meat. It was unbelievable. That is that's crazy. That's a crazy amount of meat. Cause every time I go yeah. to Korean barbecue, I spend like a minimum like a hundred dollars because i i don't go to like any of the cheap you spots. go to a good place yeah 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 the prime cut yeah. top prime shelf cut there you go uh -huh. you care about your gastrointestinal tract and I you do. don't want to destroy it that i care about it as much as i you know care about the clothes i put on my back but a friend of mine asked me he was like do you know any cheap korean barbecue places i was like well <laughs> this guy Derek went to a place called All You Can Eat Korean Barbecue and Sushi, and he ate like hell, and he didn't pay a lot of money. So maybe you want to go there. I've never been there. I would never go there, but I recommend it to you because you want to be modest. He said he's going on a date and he wants to like spend. He'd be thrifty about it. I was like, that's the only place I know, honestly. So try it that out. place. That place, first of all, that's the actual name of the place. <laughs> yeah. It's like that's, there's no, there's no like, it's not yep. a family name or anything yep. like that or anything. No. They don't hide the fact like, no, this is what you're paying for. This is what you're getting. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. It, it's $22. Like that's yep. the sign. Like you should not be able to get infinity meat for $22. Yeah. Uh, and yet yeah, it's a reality. I, did it. um, I survived it. Was it terrible? No. Tell your friend right now, do not bring a fucking date to this. <laughs> what are you doing, you savage? Don't do that. What's wrong with you? Like, why would you think that's a good idea ever? Yeah. It, it, I don't know why, like, people think Korean barbecue is cheap. It's like. It's not. It's not cheap. It's not a cheap no, date. A cheap date is not a Korean barbecue. A cheap date is like tacos from a taco truck yes. or like Chipotle, you know, like a yeah. that's a cheap date. But cream well, barbecue, I, you're gonna spend. You're gonna spend like th that's what turned me off from it originally. Because when I was, because I grew up in New York, right? And yeah. um, uh, me and my friends, we would go to Koreatown, which is like basically it's like four blocks in yeah. Midtown Manhattan. It's like two yeah. blocks away from the Empire State Building, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so that's when I, that was when I got first got introduced to it. And I was just like, we ate, but like I didn't feel full, you know. At the time, I was three hundred and thirty pounds. Like it takes Holy a lot to fill me. Oh, oh yeah, it's hefty. And there's yeah. like six of us, and the bill is like three hundred dollars. And I'm like, 
we barely fucking ate anything. I never want to do this again. What are you talking yeah. about? And then yeah. when I saw that there's all you can eat places that just like ditch everything uh, down the line between quality, age of meat and all that other yep. stuff. I'm like, oh, okay. There's other alternatives to this. Yeah. So good. Yep. So glad. Um, I do know of like, there are some Koreans like in SoCal who know how to do the all you can eat Korean barbecue the right way. They have like a strategy. Like there yeah. are certain there are certain all you can eat barbecue places that are decent supposedly. And then you go and then like you get like they do it in a certain way. They they start out with like lean stuff like beef and shit like that. And then they go into pork belly, like heavy shit. And then they get like a soup with like rice and then like it's like they have a whole like fucking system of doing it and i'm like holy shit like you're another level like i don't know how to do that <laughs> but <laughs> they know how yeah. to get a bang for their buck and they know how to like get the quality shit but i mean as long as you ate and you had a good time like i mean what that's really what matters right it's all that matters yeah totally. yeah, yeah. Totally. um uh, now but... you were out in chicago what did you do when you were in chicago i didn't do anything all i did was walk around because like in la you were walking around a lot, but you saw some shit. <laughs> I definitely saw some shit. Wow. Yeah. LA is not conducive to walking, but like I, you know, as you know, I'm also from New York and New York is a great city to walk in. Like if we can, we'll walk everywhere. And in yep. Chicago is like similar. You could walk to a lot of places. So I do it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a very pretty city. So uh, like walking was such a pleasure um so i was just walking a lot from place to place i didn't i didn't really like go to restaurants so much i just like went to where was i staying i was staying like near lakeview so okay, yeah there was like a whole Beautiful foods in area. the area mm -hmm. there was yeah. a whole foods in the area so i just like got groceries and i just ate like in my airbnb i didn't really like hit up any fancy restaurants or shit like money. that yeah, if you can, yeah you know i just walked around that whole foods is that cheap but it's cheaper than going to a restaurant <laughs> yeah groceries are cheaper than a restaurant um oh but i did have lunch with a friend i forget the area but like it looked like meat packing it was like warehouses and uh it was like a fancy area warehouses it wasn't downtown a lot of warehouses. There were like all these fancy restaurants. It looked so identical to meatpacking district. Oh, and, okay. Uh, so I'm, that would probably be, if I'm not, that's like, there's certain parts of Wicker that look like that. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Wicker is like the only thing fairly, I can think of. West fairly Loop new. has a lot of areas like that. Yeah. Yeah. You said it downtown. Was like, can you see downtown in the distance? No, no. It wasn't near, it wasn't downtown. It was like, um, I don't fucking know. I don't know this area at all. But it was like very fancy. It was like newly developed fancy, big lofts mm -hmm. everywhere, new restaurants everywhere. Some like celebrity chef opened up a new restaurant that was like fucking fancy as hell, and everybody was going there. And like we couldn't get a table because they were all booked out. Like it was like it was like that level. But then that whole area had nice restaurants. So we just went to like a like a sushi place just across the street and like had fish, and it was fucking phenomenal. And nice. Oh, uh, yeah. A friend of mine, like I, we I went to college with her, and I haven't seen her in a long time, but um, she's like in development now. Like she comes from money, so like that's her life, and she's like a landlord and shit, and um, yeah. <laughs> oh, she she, just, she has I'm a landlord money. Got it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Right. She yeah. How old is she? She's like our age, like like late thirties, but she's okay, fucking yeah. She's like a landlord is a landlord yeah. of buildings <laughs> yeah. um, so like a super adult basically like you know not yeah like you a know landlord what of buildings. she runs shit you know she what knocks on the door and collects your money i'm gonna i'm not gonna say she's super adult because that's not her money that's her dad's money you know what i'm saying good point like, her dad Good gave point. her that money and she never had to really work a day in her life to get the things that she has. God. And it's like, it's actually very easy to just be a decision maker all the time to just be a landlord, to just go I and mean, collect yeah, money. Cause you also, I mean, I I've dealt with plenty of uh, people who come from wealth and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's just, it's, 
I can't really blame them because they don't know any different. Right. You know, but they're right. just I don't know how out of touch your friend is when it comes to certain things, but they'll I don't know if she says offhand stuff like about their hard day and you're like this, you have no fucking idea what hard and day mean. Like those right. words together. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, everything's relative, but it's like, of course. you know, for me, it, it's like being a decision maker. Yeah. Okay. You, you make decisions and you have to weigh off the odds and da da da. But there's always that safety net of her wealth, like yeah. her, her father's yeah. wealth at all times. And, you know, how adult are you if you always have that? Like, that's, yeah. It's that's a real that's a good question. Point. So yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know if she's super adult. It's it's like a baby running another fucking thing. Yeah, I see that now. That makes more sense because now because at first when I I, th- I don't know why I translated in my brain as oh wow she took like this seed money and she just started buying real estate because it seems like that, that like, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm like, wow, you're uh, good point. And yeah, I think you're right. Like operating with a net, obviously it's gonna it's gonna impact you a lot differently. Like. I, I don't know what a net looks like at this point. I mean, you know, if, uh, if somebody gave that to me, I, I came into some money before I moved to Chicago, I actually, uh, I, 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 somebody left me some money in their will and yeah. like, it wasn't, it wasn't that much by anybody's means, but for me, yeah. it was an insane, it was the most <laughs> money I've ever had at one point. Yeah. And I know people right now who have that in just their savings account. And I'm like, yeah, I did. I didn't know what the fuck to do with the money. I was like, mm. I don't do enough to justify what mm-hmm. I'm going to do with this. So, mm-hmm. you know, I just paid off a bunch of bills that I had and like gave my dad some, I didn't really yeah. Yeah, I had no, I had nothing else that I needed. I'm like, okay, that's fun. You know, took myself out to some meals or something. Yeah, you know I mean, like I didn't do, I don't know, because because you, because my... you're a monk and you leave, you I lead a minimalist monk. life, and I you don't a need a whole lot. Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you, you and you much. are uh, high class. You need the finest designer clothes from Adidas. Yeah, Adidas. Adidas. The wow. finest designer clothes from Adidas. <laughs> Adidas. Yep. Even I know that's not, that's that that's a, a, a I love a it. Statement. Yeah. No, no, it's you funny. want to see my I... USB stick collection? Look at this. This is right here next to my computer. I got one, I got two, I got three. Oh my god. Four, five. They're all Jesus. empty. I don't know why I have them. You are dating yourself. Who fucking uses USBs anymore? <laughs> just exactly. Kidding. I'm exactly. just kidding. Exactly. You don't have I don't a know. cloud thing? Yeah. I, I don't even know how to fucking use that shit. But, um, okay. Well, you, you, I think we talked about this a little bit when you were in LA, but like you've made yourself, you've made like Chicago your home. Like you feel at home in Chicago now. Yes. Very much so. Like, what is it about it that's different from like Philly and New York? Because New York's a great city. Philly is a city. I don't know. Philly if it's great. Is a, I like that. New York's it's a just, great city. Philly, Philly, technically a city. It's a city. And then, and then there's Chicago. I loved Chicago, by the way. When I visited, I was like, yeah. I get it. Like, I understand why people want to live here. But yeah, what was it about Chicago that like felt like home to you? It was, well, so. It was a few things. So like for a long time, I would say for for a good before moving or for a good five years, like I got this weird I had a dream I had a dream about Chicago and for some reason, like I was just like this, oh yeah, that's right. There's this other big city because LA is not a city, like in in the sense that New York's a city, mm-hmm. but Chicago kind of is. So mm-hmm. It was just like, here's this other big city. I want to go check that out because I love Ooh. cities. I have this weird yeah. fetish for cities. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, just the second I saw it, I was just like, oh, okay, this is what would happen if New York made way more sense. Hmm. Like, it's just, and I, and it's, I found out that a lot of like the infrastructure things they have set up, like they have wider roads to accommodate uh, cars. You know what I mean? They have like the way the public transportation set up, like everything's set up because everything, uh, once the Chicago fire happened, it basically leveled everything and they were able to build, uh, build the city with the idea in mind that, oh, we're going to be, we're going to have like X amount of people. We're going to have to be able to facilitate things like cars, trucks, and yeah. things like that. So it's a newer yeah. city than New York. 
And yeah. because of, definitely newer than Philly, there are streets in Philly that if you have a big enough car or truck, you just can't drive down that street. Because, oh. they, you know, they didn't know what a fucking car was going to be back when that's going <laughs> to be so street. narrow. They're like, okay, it's a horse. You know, horses aren't, <laughs> they're not yeah. wide. So. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, There's still yeah, like cobblestone like streets in uh, Philadelphia and, and, and right? in New York. Right. That freaked me out. And Philly was where I did a good amount of drinking. So cobblestones <laughs> that are wet and drinking don't really, aren't the best things. Okay? Yeah. They're just not. Yeah, uh, especially when one cobblestone is missing and it's dark and it's two o'clock in the morning <laughs> and you're trying yeah. to get on your bus because you don't know what Uber is. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Philly okay. was just Philly was just because because I was an alcoholic and it was cheaper to live in Philly than New York. So mm, right, uh, you mentioned there was that. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Chicago. I just I don't know, man. The second first night I was here, I was just like, oh, I'm home now. I get it. All right, yeah. this is where I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, it spoke to me. By the way, yeah. L.A. spoke to me too. I loved it out in L.A. Really? I what did you like? Loved it out in L.A. What? What did you like? Well, obviously food. I mean, let's first uh -huh. food like that. Yeah. That was definitely top tier. But like, it's. I'm guessing it was just it was the sun. I like the foliage. Weirdly enough, like not just the palm trees, but all the weird trees that you guys have oh, yeah. out there. Yeah, like you have like yeah. have those long like uh uh. Like they're not pine trees, but they're like, but I, I don't know, they're like pointy. I forgot what they were called. They're like, a, they're an Italian tree, though. I looked this up. I'm like, what are those? I loved it. I liked how it smelled out there. Oddly yeah. enough, um, you know, yeah. I, yeah. I think this. I really think it was the sun, the seawater. You know, this is uh -huh. a combination of things. I do yeah. like the fact that there's multiple neighborhoods and that are all their own cities. Mm -hmm. I don't like the fact that you have to drive. Mm. You absolutely have to drive. I don't 100%. know. There's no way you can do it out there without it. Chicago, you could definitely get around without driving at all. Yeah, yeah. And I don't drive, so that's why. Right, I'm right. Good, but um. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked it out there. Uh, uh or out there, I like it here. I love it here. Yeah. How was uh, the show? The sh you say you did a show in L.A. What was the show, and how was it? Oh, um, I did uh, comedy in English at the Santa Monica uh, okay. uh, Youth the Hostel. hostel? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I liked it. Uh, it's, you know, you can't, There, it's not a room you could really prepare for because, mm -hmm. you know, you're dealing with international travelers. And I would say one thing that I learned from that was like, don't have a set where you have a lot of like local references because you know you might not be able to rely on that but i got yeah. i got by okay doing enough crowd work and stuff like that yeah. and yeah. you know just ripping i got i, I had a really good set there and then it's a crowd work i had room. another one at um canner's deli which canner's deli great food that <laughs> yeah. that show was brutal that was the <laughs> that was the hardest i bombed in months <laughs> i don't remember bombing that hard like that's how long it's been since i bombed i think i bombed one other time and it wasn't that bad like it was a brutal bomb have you ever well, done it the canners nelly show no because i know what it's gonna be like i think oh, okay that's all thing. right good. like it's it's la that's why i asked you i was like <clears throat> excuse me i was like asking you like how did you like the shows in la because that's what shows are like in la for the most part yeah. you know I how was the, how was the vibe. how was your set at liquid zoo i'm sorry i missed it i had to leave but like how did that go what was that like oh it was awful it was awful but i was expecting that it's just yeah you have you have a an open mic list of 30 comics and everybody's <laughs> doing seven minutes are you out of your fucking mind and i forgot the gentleman's name who runs it but i'm like he is an oh he to me as an open yeah. mic host like he yeah. is i i respect that man so much like you yeah yeah liquid zoo guy i can't believe i can't remember his name but liquid ryan zoo guy. ryan talmo ryan talmo if you're if you watch this you have all the respect in the world for me if you're ever in chicago come to my mic uh uh whatever reserve you want you got but yeah he's he's very liquid patient yeah is that no, how most um, mics are out there a lot of them are and uh and it but it depends like not all of them there are some rooms that are yeah. better than others and gotcha. um it really depends on who the host is honestly like the host really sets the tone and um if there's a good host who like sets a great tone then like you're 
you're gonna be fine and all the rooms are full of comics right and like yeah. la comics like people come here determined to make it and so they're very like intense and a little aggro which comes with a lot of insecurity sometimes jealousy sometimes competitiveness and a lot of them won't laugh they'll sit there and just not laugh or if even if yeah. you're funny they might hate on you um so it makes rooms kind of terrible in la that's why when i went to chicago i had such an amazing healing time because people audiences were f fucking great and yeah. even the comics were supportive and great um like even the shows like even if it's a show with audiences in los angeles like i don't know who said oh um barnes is it jerrell barnes uh yeah, darnell yeah, yeah, yeah. he's so funny and yeah. um did he say this i think he said this but he was like in la people think i can do like even if they're an audience i can do what they're doing on stage because so many people are in show business here and you know they're creatives and whatever and like they'll watch and they're like oh like she sucks i can do what she's doing better so because they're focused on that they're not being present and just listening and laughing and reacting as much so sometimes the crowds might even suck in la that's why i leave yeah. like every month like this month i'm going to phoenix and then i'm going to baltimore and then in june oh. i'm gonna be going to houston and i'll be going to brooklyn like i just try to get out of la as much as i can even though i do the open mics here on a daily like basis I try to leave as much as I can and do the road or like do other festivals and shit because I need to know if my jokes are working or not. Cause here it's not really that good of a barometer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, and I agree with you a hundred percent on that. I mean, just with what little bit I saw of LA, like you, I, I felt the vibe the second I got in the room, I'm like, okay, this is a different animal than what I'm used to. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, so like Chicago, Chicago, uh, you know, it, it has, it has its pluses and its minuses. So it's like, yeah, you have, you definitely have a more supportive environment from the comics. Cause it's like, everybody's trying to do well. You have the most stage time that you can get for free. That's easily accessible. Um, uh, from what I understand from people who've done comedy all over the country, like this is the best pound for pound dollar for dollar stage time you can get. Yeah. Uh, and with a higher quality of stage time, because as you know, that's yeah. important. Um, yeah. The drawbacks, uh, it's kind of insular uh, in that it's LA people, I feel like LA comics that I met are, they're more aware and have an idea of doing things outside of the city. Maybe it's because doing comedy in LA is, is the way that it is everybody wants to get out more whereas with yeah. chicago it's like everybody like people are doing it here and there's just pe there's people who just don't even decide to go out ever they'll they'll rarely do it or it's not done as often there's that mm -hmm. i mean there's obviously there's people who are highly competitive i never understood people being competitive with comedy ever yeah. like i don't get it i don't yeah. subscribe to it i think it's fucking ridiculous yeah uh, i think there's yeah. enough stage time for everybody if you're yeah. willing to search and that seek it out i never yeah. I just don't get it, but yeah. I definitely understand. I understand it more for LA than I do for a place like Chicago. Cause mm -hmm. like none of the shows that you're getting on in Chicago, like they matter, but they don't, they don't LA matter. You know what I mean? They mm -hmm. don't, they don't New York matter in that. Like there's no make or break career moment that can really happen in Chicago where mm -hmm. I feel like LA, that's something that's made available to the comics there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're, I don't know if I'm talking out of my ass or not, no. but that's at least the vibe that I got. I think you're right. I think even that uh, the make or break concept is also just a mentality. I agree yeah. with you in that, yeah, there's stage time for everybody. And also there's, there's space for everybody. Like uh, the whole notion of competition is not really real. Like it's something yeah. that people just made up just to make their lives a little bit more interesting and miserable and I don't know, like people get off on it sometimes, but I personally don't like it. Um, to me, if a person's funny, they're funny. And if yeah. a person's funny, they're likable. <laughs> That's it. Like, I... <laughs> you know, um, 
you know, when when it stops being about hey, try to be funny, you know what I mean? Like then, I, yeah. I don't. And by the way, I'm not going to knock anybody's hustle or drive. If somebody is yeah. out there and they're listening to and they're like this, oh, I shouldn't be competitive. If if being competitive in some mm-hmm. way makes you focus and work on you a little bit more, by all means do it, but don't do it to the de- detriment of others. I yeah. think that's where the big drawback is, you know? Totally. Just whatever works for you, fine. But I, I like underhandedness and, you know, trying to throw people under the butt for yeah. what? For what? For what are you doing that for? It's so much, like we started off with, it's so much extra yeah. energy towards something you don't like that you can be putting towards something you do like exactly absolutely exactly yeah 100 percent so, agree with that so uh, are so, you are you gonna make your uh, have you done baltimore before i'm very curious about baltimore because i i did a little never. bit in philly so kind of curious yeah. what baltimore would be like let me know after you do Baltimore. i will i will i'm going there for a film festival and i'm just there for an extra few nights so that i could do spots but yeah. i don't know what to expect you know it's my first time in baltimore doing shows um so what cities have you done shows in so far oh a lot um let's see what were your favorites and what were your not so favorites like most recently i was in st louis uh i did st louis too yeah what did you think were you there for flyover festival or were you just there just to do shows i wasn't good enough for flyover festival no uh i went there uh over the summer i actually set up a couple of shows there at a brewery So I did that and I did a few open mics while I was out there. I don't know. I had a weird fascination with St. Louis ever since I moved out there. So I decided to do something. I liked it. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, it was an interesting scene. Like one of the open mics I did was in an abandoned building. So that was fun. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) That was was interesting. Uh, I like, it. I just, I feel like there's, there's people there who should probably look to move to, Chicago, just because it's like you, you can't get as much stage time in St. Louis, mm. it's just a smaller scene. Yeah. Um, but I had a fun time there. I would definitely go back. I know somebody who's from from there, and then he moved to LA, lived here for a bunch of years, worked working comic, and then he moved back to St. Louis. <laughs> really? Like, and he's happy. Okay. With it. Yeah, because yeah. he's like, well, here I could do like all the all the clubs like within this vicinity, like two hour drive, and I could just do them and. Like and he's a working comic. Like he's doing fine. So he's a case. He's an interesting case. But yeah, people yeah, make choices. Totally. I liked St. Louis. Okay, the crowd was all right. Like they weren't my favorite. Um, they were like, they were just fine. <laughs> I'll put it that way. They were just fine. Um, you okay? Something happened. Oh, it's frozen again. Shit. Shit, fuck. You're back. There we go. I see you say something. Anything? Anything. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. You can I hear can me, though? I see you. Yeah. Can you hear and me? You can, you can hear me? We're good. I can hear you. I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Um, You're, like, frozen, yes. but... Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Th- okay, we're there's good. Like a, can you see me? There's a there's a lag. There's a lag. Um, I'm just moving around a lot now, so you can see any motion. Yeah, I think there's it's a lag. Okay. Yeah, I think God honestly, damn it, technology. I fucking yeah, I know, and I fucking pay for this platform too. I'm you know, it's great. Out. Most of this episode, you just got to see some. See, now you're gone again. Okay. Hey, you're back. Yeah. Everybody's you're back. Good? You can okay, hear me? Cool. Yep. Yes, I can. Okay. Let's uh let's wrap this up. Um I'm I do this on all of my podcasts, uh, podcasts, my podcast episodes. I only have one podcast, um, but 17 podcasts. <laughs> all on the same clunky ass platform. Um, great. Okay. So I just, what I do is uh, I, I pick a Korean drama and then I just ask like flashcard questions based on that show. 
and I ask you, like, what would you do if you were this person in this scenario? Like, what would you do? It's okay. like, yeah. So uh, the show I'm going to talk, talk about is Extracurricular. It came out a couple years ago. Um, let's say you're a high school senior named Chisu, and you operate a telephone business that provides security for underaged prostitutes. Okay. The girls wear a wristband that alerts a man named Mr. Lee who comes and beats the shit out of any male client that harasses or injures or makes the girls feel unsafe during a job. Then the women pay the man for his security and that man pays you. So one day, right? You, I mean, you're, you're, you're a high school kid, all right? You're operating this illegal business from your phone, okay? But one day, your phone goes missing in school. What do you do? Um, shit. That's a that's a lot. I'm guessing this is the entire plot of the show, right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Kind of. What do you do? So, and, and all the they're underage. You said right? Yeah. Oh, I I leave the country. Why? What? What the <laughs> done? What, what are you, I mean, f- fucking, but he's, a, wait, wait, he's a high school kid though, right? Yeah. But he's yeah. not like an 18 year old high school. I try to figure out the legalities of this here. Like, okay, he's still probably going to jail for a really long time, but he's not going to be marked as a pedophile. So that's one plus right there. Um, mm. uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, you gave me a shit sandwich and yeah. I'm trying to find the tastiest part of it. Like looking I for the it's silver lining. Exist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Leave the country. Yeah, leave, that. leave, leave the cut, <laughs> leave, leave and burn everything. Burn everything. <laughs> Just light everything on fire. Please tell me he doesn't have a file cabinet at his home. Uh, no. Don't even don't even tell his parents. Does he have parents? Uh, so his mother ran out on him when he was younger, and his father also kind of is like a deadbeat dad and doesn't live with him. Like only comes around. Aggressive when he mommy needs issues. Money. Got it. Okay. Yes, but so that's I mean, why both his parent. parents are fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so then, yeah, all right, well, then they don't matter anyhow, then. Uh, it, does he have any of his money? Or is it all, it's probably all on the fucking phone through apps and shit. No, no, Fuck. he has cash. We, he he keeps cash. So, okay, I'll I'll get into that. But, okay, let's, yeah. let's question number two. Let's say you're a girl now, you're a high school girl named Cutie, and you come from a really fucking rich family. Like, your parents right. are executives, like, CEOs of their own company, and they're grooming you to take over the family business. All right. You've been under a lot of pressure throughout your whole entire teen years. And you're like the perfect daughter that always has to exude perfectionism around them. You're the one who found Chisu's phone and you see his business and you're fascinated. Okay. And you don't need the money, but you, you find this, this business operation very fascinating and you want to join his job, but he won't let you. What do you do? I just, okay, now this show is starting to make fucking sense to me. Now I get it. Okay. Does she know it's his phone? Yeah. She took it deliberately. Oh, and, oh she's his. using this to probably blackmail him to try to get into the business, right? Like, oh, if mm. you don't let me do this, uh, I'm going to tell everybody your secret, right? Maybe. I don't she know. Does, does she try doing that? Well, I'm asking what you would do if you were this girl and you want to get this job and, and i really want to become a underage prostitute for this this my high no. school pimp you want to be an underage pimp to prostitutes with I'd him start a, she has unlimited money i'd start a rival thing obviously like are you oh. kidding me yeah why would you know yeah. it's and then competition actually helps each other when it comes to that type of business yeah. so yeah like yeah okay. it's just like oh okay so He's getting his horse to give blowjobs for X amount of money. <laughs> Undercut him, okay? Have specials. Have a fucking, yeah. uh, have like a punch card, you know, where people, you know. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Like, could be, she could do this. What is she doing? Why is she worrying about this guy? Oh, like, oh you're fascinated? Good. Start your own. You're right. You're right. Okay, and, and to be clear, he does not get, like, he doesn't get any of the sexual services. In fact, he's not even a pimp. He's a security like provider for women who are working horse. <laughs> no, 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 that's no, no. What a, 
a, a lot of pimps don't offer that much security. They don't. They're so, supposed to. That's in the job. Just... But they don't. They. I mean, right? And, and a pimp takes a cut for yeah. for the yeah. But it is okay. I, I mean, guess it is a pimp. Like okay. The I was all gonna color, say like yeah, I mean if, he's is. getting a cut. Of, Basically, yeah. yeah. But but it's like it's very much like it's designed as if it's like oh like I'm providing security like yeah. Okay, whatever. You're right. But you're right. It's essentially the essence of a pimp is there. Okay. So okay. now now let's say you're so the then guy. You should be a she pimp. Huh? Or a madam, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah, she's uh she's the madam of this um telephone operated oh, nice. business. What does yeah. she end up doing in the show, by the way? Like how does she does she start <laughs> her own? Or she tries taking over his, of course, right? Yeah. It's the latter, but <clears throat> okay. Let's say let's say you're Chisu now. You're the boy again, okay? Yeah. You've been saving up money so that you can go to college. You're actually a very good student. You you're like always top of your class. You always keep to yourself. You need ninety grand in order to go to college, all right? And you've been doing this illicit operation so that you can save up and go to school because you what you want is to get out of your horrible poverty stricken life and you want to go to college you want to make it you want to have a very normal life with a family and a regular job and shit so you saved sixty thousand dollars doing this job over the last several years okay but your deadbeat dad came to your house found it stole all of it and he sank it in a cryptocurrency scheme and now you're yes. down to zero you can't even pay the muscle mr lee what do you do sell drugs i mean listen you've already <laughs> fucked up this much keep going buddy just fucking drive off the criminal cliff do everything <laughs> yeah murder for hire listen <laughs> tell mr lee listen can you do hits for me and just pay him to fucking set up the contracts for him like you're you're pimping underage girls you've already done the work like it's like human trafficking one notch above that you're already bad like you're already already fucked up in the eyes of every moral fucking thing yeah ever. yeah yeah Just sell okay. drugs sell drugs all right all right you know? yeah you're right burn it all down okay good got it all right yeah. let's say let's say you're one of these prostitute chicks now okay you're one of these underage prostitute girls named minhee yeah. and uh you Very do well. this work in order to make money so that you can buy nice things for your boyfriend that's that's the only reason why you're doing this all right wow when when no you judgment. ask when you ask your boyfriend if he's dating you because you have money he says yes what do you do well she's a teenager though teenagers yeah, they she don't is. think about things rationally no, so they don't i mean fuck i mean because as an adult you make this whole fuck off i'm gonna go <laughs> i'm gonna go find somebody else if people are hot enough to pay for my shit they yeah. guess what i'm hot enough to find somebody <laughs> else but you know she's she's in love and she's a teenager so yeah, yeah. fuck <laughs> and i wait but i'm her so and fuck it's you're her. like i don't know I, like i don't know <laughs> man that's a tough proposition to get in the mindset of a underage underage whore <laughs> <laughs> yeah who buy who's whoring herself out to buy stuff for her boyfriend. Like if it was her dying cancer mom, then you know, I get it. That it's just like, oh shit, uh, where are you yeah. getting this money for my cancer treatment? It's like just shut up and fucking, you know, yeah, take yeah. the treatments, but man. Just wasting it on a yeah. kid who doesn't appreciate her. All right, so you would go fuck. Her. You would fuck this I mean, friend. Okay. She's gonna just have to learn the hard way, you know. Mm. When she's explaining to her husband in ten years, like, <laughs> oh, so there was a phase in my life uh, <laughs> where, where uh, another student was pimping me out, and yeah. I was making money being a teen whore. Um, yeah, and I just showered or just leave it out. I don't know, but like that. I, what would what, she? Oh, kill herself. I forgot. That's always an option. Just. And not even like a fun, classy way, just fucking yeah. knife to the jugular oh, and just yeah. twist your neck around. Oh, Feel Lord. It. Yeah. Very cachet style. Okay. Fuck. Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah. Good. This is Let's a see. real Korean drama. This is an actual show <laughs> on Netflix. <laughs> oh, my God. Is this, are they, are they, this, uh, what's it called? Extracurricular. 
Okay. Extracurricular. That would be great if it was just called Teen Whores and their pimp. Like that would be that would be a Teen Horse like, and Teen Pimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What Let's is say- it now? Like what is What's what's with all these teen exploitation shows? There's that other one that I'm not I'm not supposed to watch because I'm in my 40s and I never did. It's on HBO. I don't uh, know. With uh, the, oh uh, Euphoria, Spider Man. What? Yeah, Euphoria. Euphoria. Like, isn't yeah. that another one where it's supposed to be a high school kid who's doing crazy shit yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hear. I haven't seen it, but I hear it's like insane and good. Okay. Okay. Let's say you're Chisu again. You're that boy. Okay. That yeah. female classmate chick, Cutie, the rich one, yeah. she's now a part of your fucking operation. She like weaseled oh, her way in. She's part of it, all right? But things get messy. The two of you are captured by two thugs. They're like actual pimps and actual thugs. Grown Good. adult pimps and thugs. They figure out your business and they want to take over your operation now. And they're threatening to do it. What do you, what do, you do? kill them i mean look again like i said like you have no moral compass obviously you don't care about the sanctity of human life and she has money so it's just like dude it's like listen ask your dad for his murder connection because every rich person has a murder connection and fucking let's take care of this all right why is she hanging out with her in the first place like that's where he (laughs) fucked up right there kill her first kill her kill them kill everybody murders the solution he likes her. That's the problem. These are high school kids, Gross. right? He likes her. Yeah, that's Gross. all right. Last question. Last question. I agree. She's she's the worst. She's the one that fucked up everything. By the way, like she's the absolute en- enemy. Typical um, I mean, woman. I'm just typical kidding. Typical woman. Kidding. Typical fucking femme fatale. Okay, Mr. Lee is the last question. Mr. Lee. All right. This is how you know Mr. Lee. Uh, Chisu knows Mr. Lee. This is their backstory. Mr. Lee was a oh. homeless man. Okay, he was a war veteran, homeless man. When Chisu was getting beaten up by other high school kids, Mr. Lee intervened and helped you. Now, and then that's when you hired Mr. Lee in this operation and you guys have this like working relationship together. Now, Mr. Lee comes to your rescue because you're in this fucking mess with these thugs, but these thugs are like actual underground gangsters. They have like hundreds and hundreds of people like colleagues who can yeah. come and fuck shit up and they all come they all show up and they're trying to take mr lee out and ultimately they end up killing him what do you do no spoiler alert god damn it. Uh, <laughs> <I'm> sorry <laughs> for this show that i'm not gonna watch god damn it, Grinch. um it does sound like a fascinating show you know what first little, little sidebar uh this is all breaking bad's fault if breaking bad mm. never existed None of these types of shows with their insane fucking premises would exist. Like, what if a chemistry teacher sold meth and that, yeah. now everybody's just like this? Oh, what about yeah. a good guy serial killer yeah. and then Dexter happened? Uh-huh. So, yeah. yeah, so I blame that. Um, the anti-hero story, yeah. The anti-hero story. Uh, let's see. Um, fucking, so they kill Mr. Lee. Uh, you're kind of fucked now, though, because that's your yeah. only protection. I mean, this kid I'm taking it, he's not that physical, right? No, like he's not Ronnie, a badass high school kid. I mean, I, unless you find out, like, if they're part of like one one gang, find out who the rival gang is, and just make a deal with them. I mean, mm. that's all you can do. You yeah. know, or again, go to the default, kill yourself in a horribly <laughs> violent way. I mean, you always have that option. <laughs> okay, that's good. I like it. But yeah, that's actually yeah. smart going to their rival gang and making a deal with them. Yeah. That's actually I, mean, I guess really I, I, I I haven't been a, a underage child pimp in my life, so I wouldn't know how I'd actually <laughs> react to that situation, but sure. All right. That's it. That wraps up the flashcard questions. Thank you, Derek. Thank you for doing this. Oh, no, absolutely. Well, this podcast was, is at the end of the podcast. This is a great great time. I like I, I like talking to you, Grace. Yeah. You're entertaining, okay? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was super fun. And when when we were at Liquid Zoo with like Pratik and stuff, I was like, oh yeah, this is like a fun hang. I wish like Derek and Pratik like lived here too. I mean, Pratik does, but you know, it, it, yeah, he's yeah, more yeah. fun when you're there. <laughs> that way. <laughs> That's right, my guy. For, yeah. Thanks that was for doing fun, this. Man. Sherman Oaks, LA. Oh yeah, anytime. And let me know next time you're in Chicago and tell me how Baltimore goes. I'm, I'm I will. really interested in that.